Well hi there, thanks for joining me for yet another review. This time I'm going to be taking a look at the reissue of Vex Transbot's MX-11 lock. As uh, many people I'm sure have been waiting for this updated version of the figure after the debacle that was the, the initial version 1 release. I'm going to try and keep this a little bit shorter than usual. Um, uh, I know <clears throat> obviously this is a follow up to a review I've done before so I'm not going to go into quite as much detail. Just want to cover the the basics, uh, the differences between the two versions. Uh, so I'll try and be as succinct as I can. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll start off by going through the new uh, elements that come with uh, the, the version two. Then we'll do a bit of a comparison with the version one, and then uh, some final thoughts um, at the end uh, where they belong. Okay, so just bear with me and I'll be back with a comparison of uh, the boxes, the manuals and, and the, the other paraphernalia. Okay, so as you can see, the boxes are largely very similar. Um, there's just a little bit of a colour difference, to be honest. The, the newer box is on the right, the older one on the left, and really the only difference is that the, the newer box is slightly lighter. Um, you can kind of make it out a bit um, in the highlights and lowlights, really. That's the best way to see. Um, there's not really anything different. If you if I, I spin them around quickly, um, you'll see that they are, for all intents and purposes, identical. Same box artwork, same tech specs, um, pretty much the same printing. Again, slight differences in the um, density and intensity of the colours. Um, but other than that, not really anything to write home about. Um, nothing that would actually tell you uh, at first glance that this is a version 2. They, they haven't you know, denoted that on the box at all. I guess maybe not wanting to draw attention to, uh, to the issue or, or certainly any more attention than there already is. Um, okay, so that's the boxes out of the way. Let's take a look at the manuals. And here are the manuals. And again, not too much of a difference, uh, well, at least visually when you look at them head on like this. And again, at the back, very similar. However, when you actually look at the thickness, um, you may be able to see that this one on the right is considerably thicker. Um, the original manual only had 14 pages, I believe. Yep, 14. And it was quite light on detail. You had... Um, a very basic set of transformation instructions. Uh, there was no um, coverage of the target masters at all in terms of transformation steps. So it was really not that great. I think um, it led many people to wonder if, uh, well, how the target masters actually transformed, um, if indeed they were correct. Uh, the new manual is slightly thicker, as I said, at 22 pages. And, you know, again, largely similar, but it does start off actually with some instructions of how to transform the Target Masters, um, which actually have the unfortunate uh, side effect of letting me know that I wasn't actually a million miles off, and it's not so much that the Target Masters were broken or I didn't know what I was doing, it's just that they're really bad design, um, and, and yeah. Um, but at least now we know how they're supposed to look, um, so... Yeah, I'll, I'll cover that in greater detail when we when we get to the actual figure side of the review. Um, but yeah, other than that, you know, it, it goes into more detail about the armaments, etc. Um, tells you how to change the hands and the face uh, sculpts, etc. Which did, again, the the original manual didn't really do it; it glossed over it. And then it has the same sort of transformation sequence. Uh, interestingly, still using the V1 pictures in the manual though. Um, yeah, go through that. Same as it was before, really. Um, slightly, slightly more nuanced, I think. Um, but re yeah, really, not a huge amount of difference. They've obviously repurposed a lot of the same imagery rather than reshooting it um, right down to the coming soon at the end. Um, other than that, we have the collector's cards. Um, that same sort of credit card material. Again, very little difference with, uh, between the two. The New one on the uh, the right here, slightly darker, so the inverse of the box art. And on the back, um, you'll see that translates to, well, I hope you can see through the, the camera, uh, it translates through to the density um, 
and intensity of the colours and text as well. So you have a lighter red there versus a darker red there. The spacing is slightly different on the card. Um, that's actually a little bit too low as far as I can see. Um, but yeah, I mean, the information it imparts is, is pretty much the same. So you're not really missing out um, on anything there, depending on what you get. And finally, the version 2 comes with an x Transbots preview book which shows off some of the figures that they have coming up in their line, uh, some of which I'm really looking forward to actually. So you've got their, I believe that's Janssen, their Perceptor, which just looks really cool. Uh, had no real, real interest in getting a Perceptor, but I do love the look of that figure. Looks cleaner than uh, the fans toys, um, the fans toys version. And it also has some of the microbots uh, from that episode of the same name. Um, so I'm probably gonna go in on it because it's not too expensive. Um, don't really have much interest in a lot of the other figures. Um, we have uh, another one of their Quintessons. Again, not really that bothered. They're, uh, uh, what, what's he called? The Frank, I believe, this one, um, which is their Autobot X. Looks pretty cool, although, again, the price on that, it, it will be largely dependent uh, on that as, as to whether I get it. Um, because it's going to be a non-transforming figure, so if they come in with a silly price, I'm, I'm not going to be bothered. Uh, I've already got the plastic, um, <coughs> the plastic statue version um, from that Blue Lobster company, I believe they were called, uh, which looks fine on the shelf. But you know, if this comes in cheap enough, I might be interested for the additional articulation and gimmicks that it has. Um, we've got a couple of others there. Uh, it does have a good face sculpt and everything. I do, I do like that. Um, so that's Runabout Run Amok. I'm not that bothered about those, never really cared, although they do look pretty cool. They're very faithful to the, the tune. Um, well, the, I don't they were ever in the tune. I'm sure they were, but anyway, I, I remember them from Marvel Comics and they're very f faithful to that. Um, there you've got which uh, a character I believe is Death Saurus. I've no real interest in that myself, but it looks cool enough. Um, and then you come on to um, Punch and Counter Punch, I believe, as we move forward. Um, they're Bond and James, which you know, look really good. Again, not a character I really care about. Um, and they're releasing it as two separate characters, which I guess makes sense. Although, you know, again, the price point, it's supposed to be one character that transforms, aren't they? So I, I don't know how that's going to work. Um, there's Virtus, a uh, strange layout that they keep going between the, the, the different figures, but uh, I'm still waiting on Virtus eagerly. It's all paid up. Um, but again, he comes with a great array of stuff. Um, I don't like the fact that they seem to have made some changes um, to the colour scheme that were more accurate in the first version. So again, with x Transbots, they fixed some issues and introduced others, but it still looks good. And then right at the back, we have the bad boy Abaddon, um, which is their Galvatron, which was first teased in renders years and years ago. I love everything about this mould. Um, actually, I think it looks better than fans' toys, um, considerably apart from the uh, Proton Rocket cannon particle cannon call it what you will it's it it's too fat i know but then fans toys is arguably too long and thin so from that picture there it looks pretty good i, I, I really like that's a really nice faithful recreation of the movie pose that looks better than anything fans toys can pull off um, the alt mode is much more faithful um, and i love all the face sculpts and i just love how clean and it, it just it just looks really nice I, I'm, I'm loving that about it if it turns out to be good uh, scale wise it looks good um, so i could be all in on that Anyway, um, I've talked about all of this stuff uh, probably for far too long, but it's just interesting to see what they've put in the box, uh, some of the upcoming stuff they've got. Hopefully the quality will be there um, with those releases, uh, unlike the V1 of Locke. Anyway, let's get this stuff out of the way and then we'll take a look at some of the accessories. Okay, first thing to talk about are these fellas here, uh, which are uh, x Transports versions of Cup and Hot Rods Target Masters. Now, these obviously were included with the V1. They were quite floppy and a little bit ropey, and I didn't actually think they transformed properly. I thought there were moulding issues with them. Turns out that was incorrect, according to the manual. Um, not so much on this fella. Like, his, you know, he kind of tidies up okay. You could kind of figure out what happens with him. But this, this guy has um, these weird handles sticking out the back, which move but only move up to a point and then they get sort of uh, locked off by this. So I was thinking, well, do they need to go that way or whatever? Turns out they don't. Um, I don't really know why they move. 
maybe just so that they don't break off the second they're hit or I, don't, I really don't know. Um, but actually they need to be, remain in that orientation for transformation so they don't actually need to move from this. Um, when you look at them like this, they actually, yeah, I think they look okay. Um, they're very plain, which is very in keeping with the two models for these guys. But yeah, I have zero interest in Target Masters. Um, the V1 and the V2 there aren't really that many differences from what I can tell. I think the main thing that I've seen um, is that perhaps the um, the joints are stiffer on the V2s. They don't feel quite as flimsy, like they're going to fall apart, but they don't really do anything different. You know, this, the, the paint doesn't even look different. So I don't think they've done anything, you know, really other than just maybe improve the, the, uh, the QC. Um, but uh, actually, if you're interested, I've got the V1s here transformed up how they actually should look, um, just so you can see that you're not really missing out. So this is this is how that one with the weird leg thing looks. You can see the, the things on the legs actually clip together to form the handle, so I don't quite know why they move. Um, and there, there's the barrel, uh, the double barrel thing there. Um, I really... Yeah, I mean, the, the head on this is really bobbly and loose compared to the V2 and again the arms. So, so that is there's a definite improvement in terms of the, the quality of the build quality, if not the design. Um, and again, similarly, here is the other Target Master. Just looks bloody silly, really. It's very obviously a robot, you know, bent in half with its arms down by its side and its you know feet protruding uh, with a couple of guns strapped on. Um, it's not great, is it? Let's face it. Never going to use these uh, in alt mode. They look rubbish. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want them to be used with either of the characters, either Hot Rod or uh, um, Cup. So I will probably keep the V2s out in robot mode, and then just put the V1s back in the box, and uh, they'll never see the light of day again. Okay. So that's those guys out of the way. Let's have a quick look at the rest of the accessories. Okay, I say the rest of the accessories, but actually I'm going to leave some of them to when we, uh, until we come to do the bot mode review. But uh, here we have the alternate hands. Um, these are what I refer to as the Mickey Mouse hands because they're just giant oversized white hands. Look like uh, comedy boxing gloves. On the left here, we've got the V1s and on the right, oops, we have the V2s. Now, it may not come across on camera. I'm expecting it probably doesn't. But there is a difference in finish. Um, these are much brighter and these are quite dark. Um, there's not really much to say beyond that, to be honest. Um, the, <coughs> the V2s um, are not great. Uh, the V1s aren't that great either. Um, they just have the benefit of looking more like they're painted. Um, Although I'm not sure if it is that they're actually painted or just that they use a slightly different um, colour plastic. I think maybe the V1s are painted and the V2s are just bare white plastic. Um, but uh, it's not as evident as uh, you might otherwise see with um, with other hands on other figures. But I don't like these anyway. Um, they're, they're, they're just not very good. I don't really know what purpose they serve. Um, so I'll probably never use them. I have tried them. They do actually hold the weapons slightly better than the, the one, the, the main hands, but you know, I just don't like them enough to use them. Uh, let's move on to some of the face sculpts. So here we have one of the alternate face sculpts and that is the laughing face sculpt. Now, again, I don't know how well this will come out. But here is the V1 next to the V2. And it may actually show on the camera, the V1 is a slightly darker colour. So the, the V2 is very white um, and the V2 is slightly greyer. Plus you'll notice that the eyes are more pronounced on the V2. On the V2. Um, they're slightly narrower um, and slittier, uh, should, we, should I say, on the, um, on the V1. Now... Cup is supposed to have a darkish grey face and hands, uh, so I was hoping they'd remedy that for the V2, but they've actually gone the other way and made them even lighter, so now they're even less toon accurate, and that's one of the things we'll cover as we go on. Um, the face sculpts are pretty much identical, but just, I feel the V1, it uh, it pops more, It like the, the detailing looks better with that slightly darker off-white greyish, very light grey shade than the V2, 
Um, the eyes arguably look better on this because they're more pronounced. But again, I think that is just, um, I don't know whether it's actually that the, the piece at the back here is, is not pushed in as well. I think it is. I think it's just that this piece here, the blue piece, um, could just be pushed in more. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, it's just, again, a fit and finish thing. This this isn't quite as um, well fitting, so it's not moulded as well, so it doesn't look... Uh, the eyes don't push through as far as they do on this one. So I don't think it's necessary that they've done any changes or made any changes to the sculpt. I think it's just that it doesn't fit as well. Um, anyway, that's one face. Um, it's pretty much the same with the others, so uh, it's all really in the differences between the eyes um, and the colour of the face. So here is here is the, the smoking face. Again, probably not focusing as well as it could. Apologies for that. Um, I'll see if I can put them in my hand and see if they show up any better. Ordinarily, I'd only hold one at a time. Nope, that's not going to work, is it? Um, yeah, there's not really much difference between the two functionally. Um, again, the eyes are slightly better on this or, or you know, depending on your point of view, um, the the sort of cigar or cigar, whatever you however you pronounce it, is lighter on the newer one, as is the entirety of the face. I prefer the darker, and I would have liked them to have gone at least a shade darker for the reissue. Um, instead, they went a shade lighter. So yeah, you don't always get what you want, do you? Uh, as we'll find out. Uh, finally, we have the shouting face, which is, you know, again. I'm just repeating myself here. Exactly the same sculpt, just in a lighter colour. So white rather than that off-white greyish. Um, yeah, that's that really. Um, what I'll do now is we'll bring in the figure itself and we'll take a look at uh, the rest of the accessories and do a quick comparison with the new one. So just bear with me. Okay, and here he is in all of his glory. This is lock version 2 and I've already taken the liberty of applying a water slide to his chest uh, an Autobot faction symbol so he's pretty much good to go um, for, for uh, sort of uh, <coughs> a comparison purpose and yeah at first glance you know he looks okay doesn't he um, pretty much what you'd expect and, and what probably you know, six months to whatever it was ago, I forget when the original lot came out, it might have been maybe February, March, so you're actually talking closer to a year, aren't you? Uh, but however long ago, if this had turned up, I probably would have gone, yeah, not too bad. Um, and again, in comparison with the V1, there are some noticeable improvements, but it's not all rosy in the lock garden, so we'll cover that as we go on. But anyway, one of the, um, one of the things I wanted to cover first off is just that, uh, to be fair to, to x transbots, they have made some significant improvements to this mould. Um, or, actually that's probably not true. The mould hasn't been improved, so the limitations of the mould are still there, but the quality control on this is much better than the original release um, was. Uh, it's, it's not amazing, but it's where it should have been, um, rather than the, the basically the dumpster file that was the version 1. So probably the first um, thing I noticed out of the box was that the joints are all much tighter um, and that's across the board. Um, there's significantly improved elbow, um, waist, abs, biceps, wrists, hips, thighs, knees, ankles, you know, everything feels that little bit better or in some cases a lot better. Um, you know, everything seems to tab to get together better as well. Um, there are still some issues with like warped tabs here and there or things that don't quite sit flush but um, by and large things are no longer a massive uh, pain to tab in um, and just even other silly little things like the screws they're all uniform so on my v1 I had multiple um, different screw types and colors um, pins that weren't quite pump, uh, punched in properly or were punched in too far or whatever here it's a lot more uniform. Um, everything seems to be, you know, similar across the board. So I think, uh, yeah, just to just to demonstrate. I mean, obviously the V1 review, you feel free to check that out for a more in-depth look at the figure. But 
the articulation is is pretty much what you'd expect for a figure of this uh, of, of this sort of um, size and price bracket. You have you know a 360 on the shoulder there. Um, it has quite a stiff upward friction joint there. You can get quite a good range of motion out of it. And it has a decent bicep swivel, which is nice and stiff this time around. It has a double jointed elbow, which is nice and stiff this time around. That was a, that was a big issue with the first one. The hands, as you can see, I've got the, the original smaller hands on. They're quite stiff on the wrists. Um, and these pieces here on the wrist that used to pop off all the time, they now don't do that. Um, what else is better? The waist swivel is much tighter now, although still a poor design. Uh, the ab crunch is now pretty solid. You know, you can do that. And right, it's got very heavy legs, but it's not so it's not going to hold that pose. But, you know, you can see it does a bit. Um, the legs uh, and, you know, the, basically the, the thigh swivel is better. Um, the outward friction joint is good and solid. The forward and back motion is much better. The legs hold there. They're not going to go anywhere. Um, that's really good considering how heavy these legs are with all the die cast on them. They're really good. Um, the knees are the most improved thing, I think. They are now a friction joint rather than a really poor ratchet joint. And they hold. They don't feel like they're going to explode when you move them. I didn't have to apply any kind of um, silicon to them at all. And the ankles, I mean, actually, I say they're much improved. The, the ankles probably are about the only thing that is similar across the two. Um, they still have all the same movement, um, but they're not super, super tight, but they're not any worse than they were on the V1. And the V1s weren't terrible on mine anyway. So all things considered, they have definitely made some improvements or, or quite significant improvements. The head, again, you know, it's not on a ball joint, so it's quite limited in its range of motion, but it, it does everything you'd expect of it. Um, another thing I would mention as well is that this all tabs together so much better here. Like that's really loose on the V1, but just look at that. That's that's really not floppy, whereas the V1 is a floppy mess. All right, okay, it will do that on because that hinge is still very... Um, it's not really strong enough to support that in my mind, um, but it's still much better than it was. And these legs, as I say, are very heavy. Um, and you know just looking at that tab on the back there you can see that it probably or possibly see that it doesn't quite tab in flush there's a little bit of a gap but it's still better than the v1 and it isn't coming it isn't going to pop out like the v1 did all the time so i have no concerns in that area um but um yeah so i guess i guess out of the box my first impressions are that it's um entirely adequate <laughs> uh it does what you'd expect it to do or what you'd expect of any figure so i don't want to jump to joy and go yeah amazing x transbots have knocked it out of the park because they haven't what they've done is released an adequate figure that they should have released the first time around so well i mean they, they get props for for fixing their issue for owning it and actually releasing this and i you know obviously i didn't pay for this this was a freebie um, I paid postage, so six fifty for the postage, but I got an entirely new figure, which is now retailing for ninety pounds for free. So fair play, they did they did own a mistake. They did replace the figures as they promised to do. You know, they did pledge to do that, and yep, they did it. Um, but that doesn't mean they get a free pass on all of the issues um, that still remain. Um, so I think probably the best thing to do at this juncture is to bring in the V one for a comparison. So I've got them in pretty similar poses. Um, I've just managed to push in the panel here as I was demonstrating it, but that's easily rectified. And then, yeah, we'll get them in similar poses and we can go through some of the differences. And you'll see actually some of the real, you know, the obvious improvements between the two. Um, V1 was always a good display piece, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't quite there uh shall we say um i mean that's a massive understatement it was a it was a pile of um yeah anyway but yeah looking at it it looks nice enough doesn't it um but it's when you actually look into it properly that you'll see uh the cracks begin to show uh quite literally in some cases so some of the visual differences actually there, there are quite a lot of um subtle color changes it's probably worth covering that first off so things i've noticed um just looking at it 
um, out of the box is that there are uh, colour changes on the windshield here and you'll notice that now that windshield is a darker colour blue, not quite as light as that um, and that they now stop it at this um, piece here, it doesn't go down onto the second line like it does there so there's a, there's a uh, sort of a boundary between the two. Uh, that actually looks better I think. Um, then obviously one of the biggest things um, is that the abs are now painted um, but we'll come back to that. Uh, so whereas they, they didn't do it on the V1, they've now painted them on the V2 after, you know, <laughs> almost not doing it, in, in, even though everyone was pointing it out to them. But um, they finally did it. Um, but as I say, I have a comment on that in a second. Uh, the, the, well, I, again, this could be just down to mine, um, but uh, the colour that they've used, the golden colour um, on the detailing on the wrists and on the belt is slightly more intense on the V1. Um, but that could be down to the thickness of the paint. I think in a lot of cases, uh, well, not in a lot, but in some cases on this figure, I've noticed that the paint application on the V1 is actually better, it's thicker. Um, and that, you know, especially on my copy, and I have seen other copies that are better than this, but I've got a really poor application there where you can almost see the underlying colour where they just haven't applied enough paint to it. So that's quite disappointing. And it's similar on, on those. They're not as vibrant under the light. Um, that's a much, I mean, these pieces should be more orange than they are anyway. They, they did it more of a bronzy, goldy colour, but I prefer the V1 colour on that, which is uh, slightly annoying. Um, anyway, the belt, as you can see, is a darker grey. That's another thing. Um, the legs are the same colour, but you I don't know how well it will come out on camera, but they almost look two-tone on this, where the paint's very thin on the die cast. So on there, they put enough paint on the die cast to cover it up and make it more uniform. But here, they've only put one coat of paint on or whatever. And so you can see the darker colour of the die cast coming through the light green. And that looks very obvious to my eyes. So when I'm looking at these figures, he looks like he's wearing, you know, kind of boxer shorts that cut off of there and then he's got his other legs whereas that one looks more uniform so that is actually disappointing and from what I've seen that looks to be an issue with all of the figures they've they've cheaped out on the paint somewhat there um, another thing I've noticed is that the highlight or the accent on the knee here is now cartoon accurate in that it's white instead of that color um, the feet however haven't been changed they should be the same color like gray or white um, and so that hasn't been done similarly when we look at the sides um, these pieces here, um, they're slightly better painted on this, I think, um, but they should be um, they should be grey, um, not this colour. They've gone with the same colour as the legs and they shouldn't be. Um, what else is different? Um, well, we can see these pieces here, uh, the indicators, they're still the same and that's actually right. Uh, swinging right. Oh yeah, the windows, sorry, the, the side windows. For some inexplicable reason, they've now painted these a dark green on the V2. The V1 was uh, that lighter colour and looked better to my mind, but I don't know quite why they did it. Um, there was no real need. Um, going round, we can see the legs are, are largely similar. Um, the butt flaps here are different. So on here, they're one solid colour. Here, they are a slightly different colour and they've got two-tone because they've got accents. So that's slightly changed. The backpack has changed. It's now actually more cartoon accurate on the V2 because it's not supposed to have this different shade with the accent it's supposed to be this solid color which is is a good improvement although again I've got some you know rough paint spots uh, as I have elsewhere on the figure but you know it's still more accurate so you know yay um, the side skirts here the hip skirts are slightly different probably doesn't come across on camera but they are more accurate there um, so that's pretty good. Uh, you'll also probably notice something I haven't pointed out yet. The colour of the shark to con tail now matches the colour of his forearms and shoulders, etc. Whereas that was a different um, colour which matched some of the plastic they used elsewhere. They obviously did that off of a different um, sprue last time. Um, so that's a nice improvement. And also his musket is now a darker grey don't think that really makes much of a difference to be honest but you know that's something they've done um also should know should point out that additionally not just the paint um but you'll see that the plastic is different so here where you'll see that dark that darker color there comes comes across in here um and on the backs of the knees um now that's much more uniform the knees now match this 
as opposed to being a different colour. Um, and it's similar when you look at things like uh, this piece here is a much more um, natural colour because it matches the legs, whereas that's different. Um, and similarly, when you come around to here, you'll see that on the abs, that's now a more natural colour as opposed to this completely different colour you've got there. Um, and again, I don't know how well this will come across, but the little piece you have under the arm there, um, this little flap that's under there, that is a slightly better colour. It matches the legs as opposed to being this un unpainted piece of plastic. So, yeah, all things considered, um, it's a better job across the board but still with issues um, to my mind. Um, and again, I, meant, I, I said I'd mention it. The reason I take, uh, take exception to the abs is that, great, they've painted them. Um, you know, it took a lot of people shouting at the representative on TFW for them to actually even acknowledge it. Um, although I was posting it until I was blue in the face on their Facebook page. Um, they painted them, great, but they painted them the wrong colour. So they seem to be painted the same colour as the old windshield, which is now not even a colour on the new windshield, and it doesn't match the thighs or these pieces, which is what it should do. That that those abs should be painted the same colour as the uh, the legs and the arms here, etc., and these pieces here. Now I might even see if I can pop up um, a tune model somewhere on the screen uh, for you to have a look at. Um, now this is what we did. Uh, I say we because I was one of a numerous people who on TFW forums posted to their uh, their XTB's representative in the cup thread or the lock thread and said look here is a reference image of the character this is the most accurately coloured character model you will find just follow this you cannot go wrong and yet they did and this is what uh, this is what really prevents them from elevating to another level in my mind you know they just they produce some nice looking figures, some decent looking moulds, um, and they, they almost get it right. But it's just that attention to detail. They always manage to find a way to mess something up. Uh, things that are reasonably easy or very easy to avoid. I mean, things like the colours, you know, you could say the engineering is the difficult part. Painting the thing the right damn colours is the easy bit. Like, there's no reason why those abs are the wrong colour. Other than that, they probably went, ah, oh, we've got a bit of this paint left over. We can paint the abs and we say we've done it and it, we didn't have to pay more for this paint because we've obviously cheaped out on the legs. That's all I can think it is. It's a cost cutting exercise, which this was not the figure to cost cut on. Believe me, this was the one they needed to knock out of the park. Um, and they haven't. So I know it sounds minor, but after the frustration, you know, the money I spent on that for a complete turkey, I was expecting them to really pull out all the stops on this. And they they haven't. They've, they've done a better job, but this is what that should be in terms of um, the QC, um, rather than it being like a home run. Um, but anyway, I, I mean, I am nitpicking, I know, but that's the point of reviews, right? Um, so, yeah, it's disappointing. But it, my eyes are drawn to it and it always sees that it's the wrong colour compared to these two, which bugs me. But still, at least it's painted. I guess I should look on the bright side, shouldn't I? Um, but um, let's take a look. Uh, so one other thing I forgot to mention on the, on the whole QC side, sorry, with these thigh pieces. Um, I know I'm jumping back and forth a bit, but there's, there's quite a lot I want to talk about. Um, these, these pieces that are on sliders here, these are much better this time. They, they actually slide across and they fit better and they don't feel loose, um, which is really good. Uh, on these, they were really, on the V1 side, they were always really loose. Uh, mine weren't as bad as some. This one was fused and I had to really play around with it to get it to move. See, it's stiffer on that one. But I had better legs than most on, on the V1, so I was actually a bit lucky compared to some. Um, what I wasn't lucky with were things like this, um, which... You can see that's super loose, really, really loose. Whereas that just is not an issue with the V2. You know, it's it's it can do that and it doesn't move. Similarly, let's have a look at this, shall we? Um, there's your floppy mess. You know, that is absolutely ridiculous. Look at it; it's like a pendulum. Um, this you can pick it up like that, and it's pretty stable. And again, like this is a chunky, heavy figure. The die cast in these legs is is pretty. Um, 
pretty hefty. Uh, so yeah, it's much better in the V2. I, I say I'll give them credit where it's due. Like, you know, I'm not going to slag them off for no reason, but um, you know, when they actually improve something, I'll mention it. This again, look, that is super. It all on tabs. It's really, really loose and floppy and crappy. Um, and on the V2, that is just pretty, pretty solid. It's not really going anywhere unless I yank it, you know, which I'm not going to do. Um, I think again, just things like I mentioned, this panel here is warped um, there on the V1 and it's slightly more uniform, at least it's raised at both sides. Um, these still don't tab together quite as well as I'd like. Uh, these pieces here, there are gaps, but you know, it's always, it's curious actually, the, the V1 and the V2 are the same in that it gets closer on the right and there's a bigger gap on the left, um, although it's slightly better on the V2. Um, I think really like those are the main differences um, and similarities between the figures. Um, I think actually another thing, sorry, I was going to mention are uh, the hands. They're still rubbish. The V1s were rubbish. They, again, they did this all the time, which thankfully the V2 at least doesn't do that. You know, you can knock that and it isn't moving. However, the hands themselves, when it comes to holding things, I've actually put blue tack on this to keep it in place uh, and it still doesn't really this super loose um really not great you know really flimsy like i barely n nudge that um it uses that weird masterpiece grip design where you, you're supposed to pop that in there and then as you close the hand it's the hand closing action which keeps it in place there you go but it doesn't really work that well and then you're supposed to close the other stuff around it but then it doesn't really work. It works better on the tail than it does on the gun. I'll, I'll say that. Um, so, like, there you go. It, and again, it doesn't hold it sort of straight. So that's all. He's always got his gun at an angle. And again, it's very floppy. Straight away, it moves. I mean, it'll hold it. Don't get me wrong. It's not falling out, but it's really bad. It's, it's going back to sort of the old MP car bot days where they, they didn't hold their guns properly. So, yeah, not great. Which is it's kind of why I have him in this pose where he's holding his gun up. Um, like this um, and holding the tail like that um, I think ultimately what I'm going to do because I prefer the darker faces um, and hands is that for the best of both worlds I'm going to swap out the V1 face and hands and put it on the V2 and I think that will give me the best of both worlds um, damn it I've just somehow managed to damage the faction symbol it was perfect before that there you go um, and uh, I actually quite like the fact that the eyes are a little bit squintier on the V1 faces because of the way they're not quite as, uh, the eyes aren't pushed through enough. It actually gives him that kind of scowly, old timery look. Uh, I think it's just slightly more fitting for the character anyway. So that's an inadvertent benefit. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think I've covered pretty much everything I wanted to in terms of, um, the differences between the characters and some of the, you know, the, the improve, oh, sorry, in between the versions um, and some of the improvements um, and, and the improvements they are they're definitely there. Don't, don't get me wrong. I, you know, this, this V1 is a load of crap. You know, it's, it's just not a good figure. Um, you know, it's not the best design to begin with and it's really p poorly put together, like really badly done. Um, it's a, it is a disaster of a figure, obviously. Otherwise, XTB wouldn't have gone to all the trouble of reissuing it for free for however many thousands of people bought it. Um, you know, just looking at like again, I don't think I've I've shown the legs on this, have I? But they got this weird clicky thing that they click in one direction. I, I showed it on my other video. Like they, the ratchets seem. I mean, they're not. They don't even hold the legs. The ratchets. See that they go down, um, and then. <laughs> Then they're on frictions on the way back, but then when you go the other way, then they're on ratchets, and it's just a, weird, a really weird design. And, and out to the side, they're not great. Um, the swivels, you know, they're not flush. The knees are the worst. You know, the, the knees are really bad. They're on a, they're on this, you know, ra like a ratchet, which was really stiff. I feel like they're going to explode. Um, yeah, it's it's a. It's a load of crap, basically. Um, it, I feel like it's going to break, which is why I just basically put it on a shelf and said, right, be done with it for 
X number of months, uh, I actually feel as though I could manipulate the V2 and it won't it won't fall apart on me. Um, although actually I, I did notice earlier uh, as I was doing this, they have glued this piece on. This piece kept falling off on my V1. That was another issue. Uh, it's not falling off on this, but they haven't glued it on flush. So I might actually have to prise it off and glue it back on because there's, they've not put it flush. So it's, it's bent and I don't know whether that's going to have an, uh, an issue if I try and transform it. Um, but uh, other than that, um, yeah, I, I mean, it, this definitely looks a lot better um, than the uh, the original version did. Um, it's much, much better, let's face it. I, I, I you know, this is this is so much, um, so much improved from an engineering point of view uh, or a, a quality control point of view. It's it's yeah, it's unbelievable. It's really definitely, definitely uh, a, a, a step up. But that's in comparison to that. Um, it's really no better than the standard of any other average figure from any company. So it's 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 more of a case of this being, a, you know, an absolute, um, you know, disaster um, than it is a case of this being a home run. So anyway, I never actually transformed it for my review, uh, my V1 review, because I was slightly worried about it exploding, as a lot of people said it did, uh, breaking on them. And the fact that this ships with some protectors out of the box to keep the paint um, from scratching on the V2 makes me think maybe I won't even transform it for this review. What I might do, um, because the alt modes are so similar, uh, cosmetic differences aside, obviously we've already talked about the different colours on here um, and uh, on a couple of other places like the windshield, etc. What I might do is I may try and transform the V1 and if I sacrifice it to the review gods and it, it dies on me, I'm not any worse off. I'll just keep it for spares. Um, you know, as I said, there are some things I actually prefer about this, um, which unfortunately I don't think I can I can I can actually trans transfer onto it. You know, I prefer the thighs here, but there's no way I can move those over because of the way they operate and the way they're essentially the sliders are broken on the V1. Um, but uh, it would be good to have some for spares just in case anyway. Um, so if it dies, it dies. Um, you know, if he dies, he dies. Uh, to, to quote to <coughs> Ivan Drago, um, but um, I, I, I might give it a go, and then at least you can see the alt mode uh, and the bot mode together. So give me a little bit of time while I go away and look at uh, more talented YouTubers um, such as Emgo for uh, transformation instructions, and then I'll either be back with uh, a look at both the bot and alt modes together. Or I'll be back with the V2 for a, a wrap up and a funeral for the V1, depending on how it goes. So, yeah, just um, bear with me and I'll be back in a second. Well, I'm back and thanks to the magic of editing, that was only a few seconds for you. It was a nightmare lasting probably the best part of an hour for me. Um, and one thing it has taught me is that I will never be transforming my V2. So I have got the V1 into alt mode, as you can see. Um, I had a piece fall off, uh, the piece that I had to glue back on, which is one of the tail lights uh, back here. Um, that, I think it was this one, I've managed to push that back in. Yeah, you can see it's still loose, but I've got that back in. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, this piece here broke off entirely. Um, it's come off of the underside here, this piece here. Now this, I believe, um, was something that was very common on the V1. It just doesn't fit on that piece very well. Mine actually hasn't cracked, um, but it's it's come off and it's never going back on, I'd imagine. Um, yeah, I don't care. I probably won't ever have this in um, bot mode again anyway. Uh, was it worth it, the, the trouble? Absolutely not. I mean, that's a pretty underwhelming alt mode anyway, and it doesn't tab together very well. I've been messing around with it for ages, trying to get it to tab together better. Um, you've got gaps everywhere. Even when you do get one piece into position, it pops another piece out. Like this piece here is out. I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to be. Um, it's become pushed out 
um, because of these pieces I haven't got that quite aligned I think it's supposed to go in behind something but it was but then when I pushed that down it popped up and then I when I was trying to tab it in see this now has come undone again that side tabs in okay that bit doesn't for some reason um, I did have it flush earlier but then when I got that flush another piece popped out oh, let's come out again now this tail bed doesn't pop in properly um, there there are just bits everywhere that you know this doesn't lock in it does on that side there are pieces all over this figure that don't work very well and it's gappy as all hell anyway um, and obviously Carp always had a really boring alt mode and, and these gaps are actually just there by design that you know you can't close them up you can see that um, they're in every picture I've seen of it um, I guess from this angle it doesn't look too bad you know, it's a, what is it, a futuri futuristic pickup truck or something isn't it um, anyway I you know hope nobody feels too aggrieved that I haven't done the transformation with the V2 I'm sure it will be slightly better in terms of the tolerances and it might not fall apart but the transformation was such a joyless, fun sponge of an exercise. Uh, I think I've, you know, my, my fingers are all numb and uh, I've got skin peeling off where I was trying to do bits and pieces on it. It really was not something that I want to go through again. I, I will never transform this character again. It isn't worth it. Uh, it's, it's one of the worst in fact, no, I'm going to go out and say it. it's actually the worst transformation of any figure I've ever handled. Um, I was I was watching another another um, reviewer um, or, or presenters, probably more accurate, uh, talking about this figure. And he was overwhelmingly positive in his review um, compared to every other reviewer I've seen. Um, and he was doing the, the transformation and, you know, it, it looked like an arduous task for him. And he was saying he's, he's had worse. Well, I'd like to know what, because... This was an absolute pain in the arse to transform and the, the end result really was no good at all. Um, I think about things people complain about x transport boost. That I can transform that back and forth pretty easily. Even the feet aren't that much of an issue. This, you know, it felt like it was going to break way more than it did. So I, I'm you know, actually quite thankful it held up as, much, as well as it actually did. But it was just that fear the whole way. And then I did have bits break anyway and fall off and yeah it, it just is not worth it at all uh, so i'm not going to risk it with the v2 uh, apologies you know but i'm I'm a primarily a bot mode display guy anyway uh, i do like having some of my when i replace a figure i'll, I'll keep the old one in alt mode uh, the older version um, and if i have any duplicate molds um, like i've got two versions of t prime i've got one in alt mode one in bot mode um, so i'll do that i'll probably do that with cup i'll keep cup on the shelf in um in alt mode i might play around with it a bit more to see if I can get it slightly more aligned but I'm sure that I'll probably lose patience with it before that happens um, so yeah anyway I don't think really you're missing out on anything there's nothing there's no difference with the v2 other than the colors so when you look at it these windows would be a dark green which I do not get at all that is not referenced on any animation model I've ever seen for cup or in you know I think maybe a couple of episodes it was dark but those were the acom episodes where he was incorrectly drawn anyway um, what else um, yeah, the windshield obviously here would be that colour. I mean, you can visualise that, I'm sure. Uh, I really don't think there's much else. You know, maybe that would be the same colour uh, as the windshield. You'd hope it would be, but it's X Transport, so who knows? I, what can I say? You don't need to see V2. Uh, in alt mode to see what the alt mode looks like and in fact you didn't even need to see this in alt mode I just thought I'd give it a go um, because if it had been easier than I thought I would have transformed the v2 just to compare them but not happening I'm afraid so yeah I would recommend that uh, if you do get this figure you keep it in bot mode uh, if you do want to transform it um, be very very prepared for um, an ordeal okay uh give me a second to get the v1 out of the way um, not quite into the dumpster yet but not far off uh, and i'll be back with some final thoughts about uh, lock version 2 okay so when all is said and done is this worth it uh, this reissue i honestly i don't know i mean i still think aesthetically it's the most pleasing of the available cups um, I'm not a fan of Coot. Neither is particularly spot on to the animation model. I believe that overall this is slightly more faithful in the areas that matter. Um, 
uh, within the the sort of limitations of the engineering. Um, yeah, I, I think on balance this this still gets my nod, even with the issues. This version two it does resolve a lot of the QC issues that I had with the first figure, and truth be told, had this been the version that was initially released um, back in February or whatever it was, I don't think anywhere near as many people would have complained. I think you'd still have had complaints about the transformation being a pain in the ass, um, but I don't think anywhere near as many people would have complained about the, the figure itself. And in fact, we'd probably have moved on pretty quickly and it would have been a, yeah, it's all right, it goes on the shelf, fills the space until something better comes along, um, pads out the movie collection. I'd have probably been quite happy with it, uh, with nothing to compare it with. You know, if it exists it, it, at the moment, obviously it doesn't exist in a vacuum. I've got the V1 to compare with the paint things with and stuff like that. Um, but had this been released initially, I, I think my gut feeling is I'd have been more happy, uh, more than happy with it, um, or at least happy with it, maybe not more than. Um, but it would have been, I think, uh, akin to something like Fans Toys, um, Hot Rod and Blur, which, you know, neither are perfect, but they're close enough uh, in spirit to the characters to look the part on the shelf. Um, never want to transform either of them. Um, they both have their QC issues as well, much like this, although not to the extent of this by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but... Um, yeah, I, I I honestly think that what really killed this figure was uh, X Transbot's um, first run, which apparently came out of another factory and uh, they cut corners. Uh, what take you know, whether you believe that or not, I don't know. But if this was an anomaly. I, I've got quite a few XTB figures, and this is the only one that was um, this bad. You know, the the others have been fair to good as far as I, I'm concerned. You know, Clatu's really good. Um, uh, although actually, ironically, mine did have a QC problem, but that was limited limited to mine i think um you know I, I again there was a qc issue with their version of skids but still a good figure um their wind charger i think is um you know unfairly maligned i think it's like it's not too bad their toro you know um their cliff jumper sorry it, it, he's pretty good if, if in the wrong style for my collection now uh, but a solid little figure um i like their cyclonus i like their scourge uh you know i th they're not as bad you know oh, like wheelie's not great but you know it's wheelie isn't it um, they're not as bad as a lot of people say they are and I think they've actually released some decent figures and I'm looking forward to what's coming up just you know trepidatious about whether it's um it's more in line with the v1 of this or the v2 I, I think if if the quality is at least at this level I'll be fairly happy um or you know satisfied but um, they are the company that I just it really bugs me because they could be so much better than they are with just that little bit of spit and polish just that tiny bit more attention to detail I mean like X-Transbots if you're listening I volunteer to colour correct your figures like I will tell you the correct colours to use I will provide you with the animation models to use as a reference I will tell you if you've got it right before you go into mass production I will do this free of charge I, this is my promise to you and to the community. Um, it, it, it's just, um, they're just infuriating. I, again, I think that's what sets fans' toys apart. I mean, you know, I'm not a fanboy by any chance, uh, any stretch of the imagination, but they are, they go that little bit extra. Um, their finish is better. Um, the overall build quality of their figures is that little bit better as well. Um, I don't think it's worth the uh, the markup on their figures. I don't think the price point that they pitched themselves at is that much better than X Transbots or other retailers. Uh, sorry, um, other manufacturers. But um, they are different. They are really, honestly, in a different league to X Transbots at the moment. And, and XTB, especially after this, have a long way to go to uh, to sort of restore people's faith. Uh, I think. Um, this goes some way towards it. The fact that they made good on it and gave people a, a, a replacement figure, you know, albeit not a perfect one, um, you know, good on them. You know, that's that's. I, I mean, I, I think they had to really. If they hadn't, they just would not have sold any more figures ever. But um, yeah, I, I honestly, if you have never had a copy of this figure and this is the one you get, I don't think you'll be too disappointed. I think you'll be reasonably happy um, as long as you don't try and transform it. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you uh, if you previously owned it, make use of the replacement program, you know, where you can and, and make sure you swap it out because this is a much better piece in terms of quality, um, albeit with, a, you know, the aforementioned caveats earlier in the review. Uh, I think the price increase is unfortunate. I mean, I originally paid £70 ish, I think, for, for um, plus shipping, sorry, for uh, for Cup. 
Um, I think it's now something like 90 quid plus shipping. So I guess with the shipping all in, I've paid the best part of the new price, you know, because I've actually had to pay for the shipping for this replacement. Um, but still, yeah, around 80 quid I've paid for it. And, and that's OK. That's fair enough. Um, but yeah, around 90, it's a bit more like. Uh, uh, but that's just the way the way the world at the moment, isn't it? That's the that's the state of play across the board. We're paying more for figures everywhere. You know, fans toys prices have jumped by 20, 30 quid across the board for their average figure, I think, on reissues. Um, Takara figures have, have continued to skyrocket, although I think that's just Takara, to be honest, uh, being being Takara. And I've seen an increase across uh, across other uh, manufacturers as well, what few remain, that is. Um, now, this um, this leads me to, to believe that maybe X-Transbots, you know, seeing some of their upcoming figures, they're now trying to price themselves uh, a little bit more competitively. They, they had a bit of a mad time, didn't they, where they started trying to price themselves at fans' toys price point. And they are not there by any stretch of the imagination. So their new Perceptor is something like 90 to to £100, which seems good for what it is. Uh, and again, I'm expecting some of the figures in the, the brochure I showed earlier to be fairly competitively priced as well. Um, anyway, uh, that is uh, honestly, that's enough rambling for me from now, um, as usual. Uh, I hope this has been informative uh, to those of you who uh, have got the version one and are just wondering what you can expect if you get the V2. And of course, to those of you who've never owned a copy of the figure and uh, maybe it will help you make an informed uh, purchasing decision, knowing what's been improved, what's maybe not quite as good. Um, and um, yeah, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll reiterate, it is a, a major improvement um, build wise over the first one. So uh, you're not going to be disappointed there if you've handled the V1 and, you know, it fell apart on you. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching. And uh, I don't quite know what my next review is going to be. I think it's likely, from what I've heard, to be something I've been looking forward to for quite a while now. And that is uh, the Robot, Parado uh, sorry, Robot Paradise Acoustic Wave, uh, uh, formerly um, fans toys and, and kind of an offshoot of fans toys uh, their sound wave so that's due to drop in the next week or two i think so hopefully i'll have that along fairly soon um, and i'm hoping the cassettes release at the same time but i've heard rumblings they might not so it, it may be um, a two-part review that uh, i'm hoping i can split the order because i ordered both together um, but I'm, I'm sure i'll work it out i will pay extra for that guy because uh, i am looking forward to it anyway so hopefully you'll join me for that one and um you know, thanks for uh, thanks for watching. If you're an existing subscriber, if you're new to the channel, um, you know, I'm not going to beg. But if you fancy subscribing, that would be appreciated because it all helps uh, get these out uh, and viewed. I, I do this uh, as a hobby. Don't make anything from it. As you can see, I'm a pretty amateur guy who gives my opinions. I'm just a hobbyist, not in this for the money. Um, I spend way more on the hobby than I'd ever make from YouTube, um, given that I make zero from YouTube. So, um, yeah, if you, if you like my rambling, my rambling, honest stylings, then um, hit the subscribe button if you like and maybe throw me a like or a dislike if you really didn't like it. Um, until next time, it just remains for me to say take care and stay safe, everyone. And I will see you hopefully in a couple of weeks time.